Good evening, everyone. Really appreciate your being here to support the family. Uh, Susan, do you mind um, muting yourself? Because uh, I can hear, here we go. I just muted you. Okay. Because otherwise we can hear you. Thanks. Okay. So tonight we're going to honor Hashi Glick, wonderful friend, father, grandfather, uncle, son. Tis a fearful thing to love what death can touch, a fearful thing to love, to hope, to dream, to be, to be and oh, to lose. A thing for fools this and a holy thing, a holy thing to love. For your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your word was gift to me, to remember this brings painful joy. Tis a human thing, love, a holy thing, to love what death has touched. And Cantor Cohen is going to be leading the liturgy. It kadar it kadash shmeir raba. Biyomadi vrachirote biyam lich malchote b'chayechon uviyomechon uv'chayechol beit Yisrael ba'agala uv'zman kariv ve'imru amen. Yehish me raba mevarach biyalam yol me yol ma'ayit para. Vit parach, vit tabach, vit par, vit roman, vit nase, vit adar, vit aleve, vit alal, shmide kudeshav. Prichu leela, min koberchata ve shirata, tush pechata ve nechemata, damiran be yolama, ve imeru, amen. In the formal beginning of the service, the Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMevorach. Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam And the first blessing before the Shema is a blessing about creation, about the world that we live in that God created. Alone, I marvel at the evening sky, gold caressing blue, blue caressing dark. Here in prayer, I need to see your hand behind the sky, your creative words once more forming light and darkness. I need to see the care with which you carve the moon, the stars, which make a fearful darkness nurturing not light. The mixture that brings evening forth from day, morning from night, has been shaped like Adam from the earth by you. You who mixes in the evening, you are praised. And the second blessing is a blessing of revelation that out of love, God gave us Torah. Ahava Torah Torah um mitzvot, chukim um mishpatim, otan ulimad yedan. Alken Adonai Eloheinu, v'shochveinu v'kumeinu, nasiach v'chukecha, v'nismach v'divrei Toratecha, and we declare God's oneness. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. 
via afta et aduna yelecha bechol avcha u bechol nafshecha u bechol meodecha vehayu hadevarim ha'ele asher anochim tzavcha hayom al levavcha veshinanta ham levanecha vidibar tabam Veshitcha bevetcha uvelechtcha vaderech uveshochtcha ukumecha uksartam leod ayadecha beayu letotafot peinecha uchtaftam al mezuzot betecha uvisharecha. למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי והייתם קדושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם אמן Will you open your soul to me? Will you speak your mind? Can you love me? Will you take my words? Take them with you, teach them in sunshine, teach them in kitchens, make these words psalms, make them stories and philosophy, repeat them until they are music, wrap yourself inside the sounds, write these words and keep the writings close at hand. Or better yet, know them by heart to gaze upon them with mind's eye, to carry them wherever you go as your prayer at night, most important words you speak in the morning. And when you're not sure you can love me, remember Mitzrayim, remember, everything still depends on our love. <laughs> מי כמוך נדר בקודש, נורת העילות אוסף אלה. מלכותך ראו בניך בוקי הים לפני משה ומרים זה אלי, אנו ואמרו, אדוני מלוך לעולם מי כמוך באלים אדוני, מי כמוך נעדר בקודש נורא תהילות אוסף אליי. In another poem from another culture, a Persian poet describes another way to get across an imposing body of water, because of course the מי כמוך is what we sang when we got to the other side of the Sea of Reeds on dry land. It is not so much miracles, but our shared efforts that will save us, though they may of course be one and the same. And here's the poem. If you put your hands on this oar with me, they will never harm another and they will come to find they hold everything that you want. If you put your soul against this oar with me, the power that made the universe will enter your sinew from a source not outside your limbs, but from a holy realm that lives in us. We continue silently with the tefillah.
Life After Death. These things I know, how the living go on living and how the dead go on living with them. So that in a forest, even a dead tree casts a shadow and the leaves fall one by one and the branches break in the wind and the bark peels off slowly and the trunk cracks and the rain seeps in through the cracks and the trunk falls to the ground and the moss covers it. And in the spring, the rabbits find it and build their nest inside the dead tree so that nothing is wasted in nature or in love. We're gonna share a few pictures of Heshi before several people share some memories of him. Here we go. So a few, a few people are going to share their memories of Heshi. And we're gonna begin with his daughter, Susan. And Susan, let's see if um, 
your Wi-Fi is strong enough to do that. Okay, I'm unmuted. So there you go. go. So you can hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, so on behalf of myself and my family, we're so glad that you all zoomed in to support us and honor our dad's memory. Your love and support are overwhelming. Having to wait five weeks to bury the loved one is paralyzing. It doesn't seem real. This situation brings to mind one of my dad's favorite jokes. You know, dad always started meetings with a joke. Three friends from the local congregation were asked, when you're in your casket and friends and congregation members are mourning over you, what would you like them to say? Artie said, I would like them to say I was a wonderful husband, a fine spiritual leader, and a great family man. Eugene commented, I would like them to say I was a wonderful teacher and servant of God who made a huge difference in people's lives. Then Al said, I would like them to say, look, he's moving. <laughs> yes, I keep expecting him to walk into the living room I keep expecting to walk into the living room and see my dad sitting on the couch reading his newspaper. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen again. And here we are. But that does give you a taste of my dad's wonderful sense of humor, his dry humor. I learned from one of my past rabbis that everyone is similar and that we all have a beginning, the day we were born, and an ending date, the day we pass away. Our differences are in the dash between those two dates. That little dash represents our individuality and how we lived our life. My mom told me to make sure to let everyone know what an intelligent, caring person my dad was. Today, I'll tell you how my dad's dash affected my life. My dad was known by a number of names. His name on legal documents is Harold Glick with N-M-I for no middle initial. His parents called him Harry. On his bar mitzvah, he was called to the Torah as Herschel, a Yiddish name. And later he would sometimes be called to the Torah as Zvi, a Hebrew name. Sometime during high school, his friends all started calling him Heshi. People who really like him a lot call him Heshala. In the Air Force, he was known as Captain Glick. He's Uncle Heshi to my cousins. Our friends called him Mr. Glick. To my children, he's known as Papa. And to Shirley's children, he's known as Grandpa. And me, well, just call him Dad. He was the most perfect dad for me, at least most of the time. I adored him. Who wouldn't? He was tall, dark, handsome, good sense of humor, fun to be with, took us places and made sure we had whatever we needed, not necessarily everything we wanted. He taught us how to live life by example. If something needed to be done, he would always step in and do what needed to be done. Whatever he took on was done with 110% of his effort. He liked the house to be clean and orderly. After all, everything has its own place and that's where it should be. I think part of that had to do with his military background and being raised by one parent for his first 10 years of his life. He told me as a child, he made his bed every day and kept the house clean while his mom worked in her luncheonette. In the Air Force, he was taught the correct way to make a bed with those special corners that don't come out until it's time to clean the sheets. Being orderly is an area where we clashed. I was clean, but far from neat and orderly. Once a year, dad would come into my bedroom and rearrange everything to make it neat and orderly. I hated that because for weeks I couldn't find anything. Dad was always involved in civic activities. He was involved in B'nai B'rith, the Riverside Jewish Community Fund, and different military organizations. He has awards for everything he did. The temple used to have a bowling league that he and mom participated in for years. Dad helped out in Martin's Boy Scout troop 
and Little League Baseball. In the Boy Scouts, he taught the boys all about astronomy on a week-long trip to Mammoth. He had used the stars to navigate the B-26 and B-52 airplanes in the Air Force. He always helped out in the temple whenever he was needed. He was expert at running the temple's dishwasher. We were always doing something at the temple. I would say most of mom and dad's friends were from the temple. Dad worked six days a week, Monday through Saturday, and day number seven, Sunday, was for family fun. That would involve bowling, miniature golf, visiting libraries, museums, the zoo, day trips to San Diego, Santa Barbara, Solvang, Palm Springs, the mountains, the beach. Beach days were always fun. We'd make, wake up early in the morning and help dad pack up the car while mom made a picnic lunch. Then we'd drive down to Corona Del Mar or Newport Beach and spend a whole day on the beach, lounging around, playing in the sand, playing in the water, looking for seashells, searching through the tide pools at high tide. We would, high tide, I'm sorry, it had to have been low tide. Anyway, we would stay until the sun went down, then pack up our things, change our clothes, and go to the spaghetti factory or my Oni's pizza for dinner. After dinner, we would walk around the beach neighborhood and look at all the beach houses. Family was important, so vacations were always spent together. When we lived in Amarillo, Texas, we took driving trips to visit family in Philadelphia. Dad put a mattress in the back seat so we could sleep along the drive. We played lots of games in the car like who would be first to see a change in scenery or find license plates starting with an X or a Z. We'd visit family, museums, the zoo, and go to Atlantic City. When we lived in Okinawa, we would spend a week at Akuma, which was an all-inclusive beach resort, but not like the beach resort you'd think of. The drive getting there was treacherous. Dad would be pointing out all the scenery while we kept our eyes on the road. This, it was a little peninsula with two beaches. There was snorkeling, glass bottom boats, miniature golf, and outdoor movies. One time we collected shells only to have them all disappear in the morning. They all had animals living inside of them. Living in California, our vacations usually involved drives up or down the coastline, San Francisco being a fun destination. Dad was always good at helping with homework. I never understood how he knew so much since he didn't go to college. Turns out the military sent him to school. His classes weren't over a four year period like college, but completed in very concentrated time slots. Instead of fancy Texas instrument calculators, his calculators were all cardboard and plastic slide rulers. He was trained to clear his mind of everything except the task at hand. If one thing changed, everything had to be recalculated quickly. He's very sharp on his feet and always calm. Nothing ever bothered him, at least not what we could see. I wish I could do that. Dad taught me lots of things. He taught me to drive and would let me take the car to drive my friends to school games in the beach. He taught me the value of a dollar and how to save my money. He taught that it was better to spend a little more money to buy something that will last a long time rather than to spend less money on something that will fall apart and lead to purchasing another item later. He taught me that it's important to travel and see how things are done in other parts of the world. He taught me how to be a good parent. I hope my boys agree with that. And sometime in the future, I hope to be as good a grandparent as he was to his four grandsons. Dad also taught that to get through life, you need to use common sense and humor. He was always bugged by people who did not have a good sense of humor. It was difficult to get dad to places on time. He was usually the last to walk to an event, to walk into an event, but always the last to leave at the end of the evening. That might have been his quiet way of rebelling about his strictness of time during his military days. My dad would do anything for his children. He carried it even further with his grandchildren. He was so proud to have four successful grandsons. 
Aaron, a middle school counselor, and his wife, Stephanie, living in Smyrna, just outside Nashville. Seth, an optometrist living in the Seattle area. Brandon, a kindergarten teacher in Santee, California. And Trenton, a minor league pitcher, along with his girlfriend, Madeline, currently back home in Santee, awaiting the end of the pandemic. They all enjoyed their grandfather attending everything they did while growing up. They enjoyed the grandfather's sense of humor and got a kick out of how he said what was on his mind. If they needed something, they could always count on their grandfather. I had some special time with my dad this past year when the COVID pandemic started. It was difficult in the beginning because he didn't want me here with him and felt he could do things on his own. He didn't like me telling him what he could and couldn't do. He hated me asking the doctor if it was okay for our friends to come over for dinner or for us to go over to their homes for dinner. He just didn't understand the severity of the pandemic. He also told me I was cramping his style. I had to learn to give him his space. He didn't want me cooking because he didn't want to clean up afterwards, even though I told him I would clean everything up. Some mornings I'd get up early and cook for him and clean up before he woke up. He never complained about anything I made for dinner, although there, there were some things he said I didn't need to make again. He would always clean up the kitchen after dinner. Dad had a tendency to stay up at night much later than me and then get up later in the morning. He was quiet until about 4 p.m. after he finished reading the newspaper and then he'd pep up and start talking. About 10 p.m., he'd start telling me stories about when he was younger. So I adjusted my time and stayed up late with him. We eventually got used to each other. Dad's life revolved around Temple Bethel. Most of his friends were from the temple. He and mom traveled the world with their temple friends. Dad had a group of guys that got together once a month for poker. There was another group that attended the symphony and another the theater, and then they'd go out to dinner afterwards. He enjoyed going out to dinner with the Wednesday group, which dwindled over the years. The COVID-19 pandemic put a stop to all these activities and made his life lonely. Oh, I forgot to mention something very important I learned from my dad. Are you ready for this? Sour cream is good on top of everything. And I mean everything. Also, everything at a Jewish deli is delicious. That pickle makes everything taste good. Since I don't like the pickles, that just meant more for dad. So dad, even though I thought we'd have another six to seven years together, I'm thankful for the, all, all the good times that we did have. Thank you for being there to protect me. I, al I always knew if I was in trouble, I could take the dime out of my shoe, call you, and you would come to my rescue. I remember feeling safe at the top of the Ferris wheel because you were sitting next to me, holding me so I wouldn't fall out. Thank you for a wonderful ride. I love you and will miss you muchly. That's beautiful, Susan. And Susie Copel is gonna say a few words. Susie, Susie, you're you're muted, Susie. Hershey and Norma were not only our very good friends, they were our extended family. We had so much fun with them. We went, we traveled, we we uh, celebrated birthdays, anniversaries. The 4th of July was spent around their pool watching the fireworks. The 3rd of July, we go to the National Cemetery where the, the, when the uh, symphony played and Heshi would tell me, the 3rd of July happens to be my birthday. He says, see Susie, the symphony is playing for your birthday. <laughs> And uh, Heshi was a sweet, a very sweet man. 
And he liked the simple life. He didn't put much importance on fancy clothes or modern conveniences like a computer, cell phone, answering machine until his daughter Susan finally purchased one and installed it. And he didn't use the dishwasher either. That was used for storage. And after he, he loved to travel and to go out to eat. And uh, after Norma passed away, I used to invite him quite often. He loved liver and onions and baked potato. So that's what I would make. And he also liked Werner's favorite meal, which was mashed potatoes, sauerkraut, and knockwurst. Not the best of diet, but I enjoyed looking at him eating. <laughs> and his sense of humor was something else. He was telling the story of his father's many marriages. And I'm sure he embellished the story a bit, but this is how I remember it. His mother and father were divorced, he was very young. And a few years later, he decided to visit his father. He rang the doorbell and a strange woman answered the door. He said, who are you? Well, I'm your father's wife. She said, you must be Harold. The second time, a few years after, when he was on leave, he went to visit his father again. He rang the doorbell and another woman answered the door. <laughs> and he said, who are you? Well, I'm Mary, I'm Mr. Glick's uh, wife and you must be Harry. The third time when he was in California and his father lived in LA, he went to visit him again and <laughs> Another woman answered the door. <laughs> and she said, I'm your father's wife. You must be Ashy. You see, his father never told him of these marriages. He was married four times. And I must commend you, Susan, for the wonderful daughter you've been your mother would be so proud of you. And I, mu I'm, I must say that you're a, you show a, a, you've set a wonderful example to your own sons. And I'll borrow the rabbi's word and say, God bless you and your family. And the last thing is that Heshi and Norma will be forever in my heart. Now it's Adrian. I can sit here. They can Thank you, Susie. Susie. Oh, you can sit here. I uh, just want to go on uh, what Susie left with it, Susan to thank you so much. You uh, have shown everybody what it is to be a loving daughter. And I also love all the photographs. I've loved looking at the photographs throughout their lives, uh, especially the ones when they were very young because we all change so much. <laughs> but, um, you know, when I think of Heshi, it's difficult because I always think Norma and Heshi. There's couples in our temple that you always think of them as a pair because they've been married so long. So it sort of rolls off your tongue. And so to think of Heshi, the first words I think of 
Hesh is a genuine article. No airs or graces. Um, I loved his smile. He had this incredibly lovely smile that's captured in so many of the photographs. But I came to Temple in 1983 and Norma and Heshi, like many of the other longtime members, members of our congregation, they welcomed me. Mishpocha was important to Norma and Heshi. They hardly knew Bob and I, but we were invited to the July the 4th uh, barbecue. And we were so grateful to be included so early um, with that, them hardly knowing us. But there was a commonality because um, my husband, like uh, Heshi, was Korea Air Force. So I learned very early that Heshi wasn't keen on grocery shopping because Norma and I <laughs> would always meet in the commissary, block the aisle and have people getting very nasty at us <laughs> while we chatted for at least 30 minutes <laughs> while we were grocery shopping and just talking about, well, why doesn't the uh, commissary carry this? Because uh, we, we don't have enough and the managed evidence is so expensive <laughs> and it really should be less because we're military, mm. but it, it, we would go on and on and on. But we seem to always meet in the commissary at least once a month. And um, Heshi, I just always felt that he was, steadfast he he was what everybody would like to think of as a very very fine gentleman and temple meant so much to him and our congregation but the one thing i remember so much about heshi in particular is at the congregational meeting because when it came to the treasurer, Heshi was ready. <laughs> he would go line item by line item and he would want to know exactly why this expenditure or that expenditure. And I just loved it because it really did show how much he cared because we've gone through some perilous financial times in our congregation and Heshi was right there watching every penny. And so I always remember that about him. But as I said, it just was uh, another example of his caring for Temple Bethel and our congregation. And I've met many of uh, Heshi's children in the last years. And uh, I have to say, they're a chip off the old block because they're all wonderful. And they've been left an incredible legacy that's going to go through and through the generations created by this incredible couple that I've been privileged to know. And I know with all my heart that Heshi, his memory will be for a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. And thank you, Susie, for your beautiful words. And Randy Lester Wilson is going to say a few words as well. So upsetting. Yeah. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much, Susie and Adrian, for preceding me because I was in tears after. Susan finished, so <laughs> you, you provided a buffer for me and I appreciate the smiles as well as the memories that were shared. I too am honored to share a few reflections of Heshi. The similarities between the lives and the deaths of the Glick and Lester parents blesses and touch me. Both Heshi and my father were in the Air Force as has been mentioned. That is where the commonalities begin. Heshi and my father were stationed at Ellsworth Air Force Base at the same city. Rapid City, South Dakota. My parents are from 
the city, South Dakota. Two of the four Glick children and two of the Lester children were born there. During the Vietnam War, Heshi was stationed in Okinawa and my dad was on Guam. Heshi was stationed at Amarillo in Texas, my dad in Wichita Falls, Texas. Both retired from the service at March Air Force Base. Norma, the love of Heshi's life, passed away in the early hours of March 28, 2019. Nineteen hours later, my father, on the same day, passed away unexpectedly. My mother passed away on Wednesday, December 16, 2020, and was buried Wednesday, January 13. One week later, Wednesday, January 20th, Heshi passed away. The graves of Heshi and Norma and my parents are about 10 feet apart. Whenever Susan and I go to the cemetery individually. She visits the graves of my parents and that of hers, and I do the same. The intersection of their lives and deaths have created a special bond that Susan and I feel. Following the tragic passing of Norma, as she attended Shabbat services when he was able, he seemed to be lost, searching for familiar faces and deep down hoping to find his beloved. Eshi never had to wonder where Norma was during their years at Temple Bethel. Norma was in the social hall for the Oenig and she was doing what she loved, talking and connecting and sharing life with friends. Eshi missed that social connection so desperately during the pandemic. Zoom wasn't the same and he wasn't afraid to say it. He was right and yet it did provide a modicum of socialization that he longed for. Heshi and Norma both embodied Menschlichkeit in real and tangible ways. They raised their family with ethics and values, heart and soul. Susan, you honored your father in the most Jewish of ways. I miss Heshi, Heshi's smile, his laughter, and the link that he provided with our shared past. May our individual and collective memories of Harold, Heshi, Glick remain an enduring and endearing blessing. By the way, my father's first name was Harold. Heshi's given name was also Harold. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. It's another odd coincidence as well, which is that today happens to be the art site for Norma. I'd like to open this up. If anybody else would like to say a few words, please um, feel free to do so. Um, obviously, if you would rather keep the words in your own heart, that's okay too. But um, I would like to give people the opportunity if they'd like to, to say anything. I just want to add something that, you know, they always say things happen for a reason. And I ended up with an early retirement that I hadn't really planned on. And it was because of that early retirement, I was able to spend all this time with my parents. And Shirley, my, my youngest sister and I were talking and they said, had I been working, which you know, I, I should have been working still at this point, when my mom first broke her collarbone, we would have had to done something with their living situation. But because you now I wasn't working, I was able to come and spend a lot of time with them. And then when my dad started having different issues with COVID, everything my husband and I did was gone. You know, there was no symphony. No, no, you know, we would be out every single night of the week. And there wasn't any of that. So it made it easier. My husband was so supportive of me being here. And I from the March till about Father's Day, he wasn't even allowed to be here. It wasn't until Father's Day that he started coming in to be with us on the weekends. So uh, you know, I uh, appreciate that too. It was a pleasure knowing him. Would anybody um, like to say something? Yes, uh, Rabbi Gottlieb.
Thank you, Rabbi Singer. And thank you for coordinating beautiful Minyanim as a source of comfort, catharsis, and holiness to the family. Just very, very briefly, my association with the Glick family is through the Bronstein family, through Susan and Bernie, uh, and their sons for that matter. And I want to express, of course, to the entire family, the entire Glick household, the age-old salutation of Hamakom Yinatchem Etchem Betoch Sha'ar Avleitzion V'Yerushalayim. It is very easy to speculate without foundation and to believe in things without proof. Love is a great example. We can't prove it, but we know when it's absent. It's not tangible, it's ethereal. Friendship, loyalty, these are other expressions, but they're not tangible. We can't wrap our hands literally around them. And I say that in the backdrop of what I certainly understand is a normative Jewish view that there is something beyond our existence here on earth. Contrary to what many Jews may wrongly assume, there is a notion of heaven and hell and even a notion of purgatory within the broader brushstroke of our tradition. Where did Christianity ultimately get it? It wasn't just Gnostic theology. It came from central teachings within really the depth of Jewish thought. And I say that not to lecture and not to stand on any soapbox because I have my doubts as anyone else does. But I pray, I do pray that Harold and Norma, given that as was mentioned, it is her two year Yortzeit commemoration of her passing, that they are truly the beneficiary of an existence far more wondrous than the one that they left. I do hope for the entire Glick household that their memory serves as a source of inspiration, a source of great goodness, and a source of even greater familiar bond, familial bond. May their names truly be a source of blessing. May they rest in peace. Thank you. Anyone else? I hated to lose to Hesia at poker, but I remember two things about uh, Hesia and Norma. On our trip to Tahiti, uh, we, they were celebrating their 49th anniversary, and it was quite a feat uh, we had in Tahiti. The other thing that I liked about Norma and Hesia especially is her cooking, her cakes, uh, when she used to bring them at the Benebreth uh, Vegas trip. Uh, we had, in the 90s, we were raising funds uh, to Benebras uh, by making the trip to Vegas. We used to fill up a bus, and Hashi and Norma were always present. And uh, I remember that we enjoyed them. We enjoyed her food, her cakes. Uh, anyway. And his humor. And what? His humor. And his humor, of course. <laughs> but poker, if Hashi was not present, that was the only time I won. Ah! <laughs> when Heshi is there, no, I couldn't win. Thank you, Al. Anyone else? Okay, if no one else uh, would like to speak, we were, we were gonna continue with El Male Rahamim. El mole rahami shokhay shokhay na pamaromi ametay menuchan khona Tachat kanefei ashechina Bemalot kedoshim Tahorim 
که زهر را کیام ازیریم هت نیشمات هر شلوغ بن ویکتوریانو شهالان خیولامو بگانیدن بگانیدن ات منو خاطر آن بالا را خامیم یا استیر او بسیتر کنافاف لیولامیم بیتر را بیتر را Adonai, oh, 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 Veyanuach b'shalom, b'shalom al mishkavu v'nomar. And Rabbi Gottlieb is going to read the English for us, but it's a slightly different version. So we will just focus on Rabbi Gottlieb. O oh God, exalted and full of compassion, grant perfect peace in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure to the soul of Harold Glick, who has gone to his eternal home. Master of mercy, we beseech you, remember all the worthy and righteous deeds that he performed in the land of the living. May his soul be bound up in the bond of life. The Lord is his portion. May he rest in peace and together and humbly can we say, Amen. 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 And we will continue with the Alenu. Alleluia, <laughs>
Before we move on to the mourner's cottage, I'd like to ask if anyone here this evening is thinking of someone, whether you're in the first seven, 30 days of mourning, the first year of mourning or observing a yard site, please feel free to mention a name or to put it into the chat. Arnie Geller. Werner Kokel. Bob Felix. Rabbi Bennett Herman. Edward Wishu. We also think, of course, of those who uh, have been taken by COVID in this country and other places around the world. And we think of those who perish in the Holocaust and have no one to say the mourner's cottage for them. I, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Norman Kaplan was added and Richard and Estelle Blake. And if you'd like to unmute yourselves for the mourner's cottage and join me in it, Phil Radin, please feel free to do so. I'll just wait a moment to see if any more names come up. Jeffrey Roth. Are we unmuted? Yeah. Okay. Um, you're tied for my father, Saul Schiffer. And uh, I've been saying it's good for my uh, nephew, Michael Nemiroff, all year. For my nephew, Daniel Madden, Manny and Judy's nephew. And my best friend from high school, Allie Lauren Niles, and another good friend, Barry Moskowitz. First year, Janine Lester, Dina Eliason, Julie Eliason, Dr. Bob Levy. I'm gonna share my screen. And as I said, feel free to, to unmute and to, and to join me if you'd like. Oh, she has a dog there. Yikadal, the Yikadash, Rene Rabba, the Alma di Frank, the Amir Monte, the Hayahon of the Yomehon, the Haye Israel. Agala is man kari. Amen. Yehesh me raba me barach me alam la me alaya. It barach me shabash me kaar me dromam me nasid. It hadar me talavi talal shmeid kudshab rikhu. Leila. Leila min kol berhata b'shirata. Tush berhata v'nech matid. Amiran be alma ve'imru. Amen. Hesh lama raba min shmaya. Ayim aleinu ve'alinu Yisrael. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved, just together we say. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone to please mute themselves again. And uh, Cantor, would you like to lead us in? Uh, Ose Shalom. Ose Shalom Bim Romav. Uyase Shalom Malenu. Deyal Kon Israel. Veimru. Imru Amen. Yas Shalom, Yas Shalom, Shalom Aleinu v'al kol Yisrael. Yas Shalom, Yas Shalom, Shalom Aleinu v'al kol Yisrael. Yas Shalom, Yas Shalom. Shalom Aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom 
Shalom Aleinu Y al Kol Yisrael So it's Saturday night, and we thought it would be a nice idea to conclude our service tonight with Havdalah. So that is what we're going to do next. <laughs> The alarm is going off. Go ahead, go ahead, Rabbi. You continue. Okay. Lie, 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 Bore me ore ha esh ya la 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 Ben Olechoshech, Ben Yisrael Amin, Ben Yom Ashvi, Vesheshet Yeme Hamaseh, Baruch Atah Adonai, Hamavdil Ben Kodesh Lechol, Lai, 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 la <laughs> I'd like to thank Cantor Cohen for leading us in the liturgy this evening. 
And I'd like to thank everybody who came here to support the family and friends. And thank you for sharing beautiful memories and funny stories about this wonderful man, Heshi. Um, it's good that we can laugh as well as cry about his passing, laugh about all the wonderful moments that people had with him and the wonderful jokes that he would tell and his wonderful sense of humor. Um, I'm going to leave the, um, the Zoom on and people can visit with each other and chat. Um, but otherwise, good night and thank you so much.